Welcome to Born Without Boundaries Romantic Tarot. This is a full spread for all signs. You'll see me, I'll be writing down the timestamps as I go. Um, so each sign gets covered. This is uh, predictions for the next weekend out. So the predictions for this weekend, if you want to review them, are already in the weekend romance playlist. You can see them. I made it last week, so I always do this a week ahead. So this is for next weekend, uh, maybe the next two weekends. This is the energy of love and romance uh, for sun, moon, and rising sign specific. So this whole video, like I said, I'll timestamp them. You'll be able to look up which signs really pertain to you as well as cross watch very easily. So the timestamps are going to be in the description box below. And they're also going to be pinned. I always make a little pin in, a, in the comments so that you'll be able to access it on mobile as well as desktop or laptop. Um, just so that you know, also in the description box is a link to an extended video after these love reading predictions, these romance readings. What I do um, in, the, in an extended video is I, um, I do who's coming towards you. So who is most likely going to be the person that you meet if you're going to meet somebody this coming weekend or the energy that you need or will be most compatible with you this weekend. So this coming weekend. So let's get right into the readings. I have meditated on the cards. I have clarified the energy with my, um, with my, singing, with my singing bell. I've clarified it um, and I've meditated and I've already shuffled the cards so we can get right into it. And like I said, I'll be taking this down. I, I know it's, <laughs> I'm time stamping. I write it down crazy, but true. We'll always start at Scorpio. Scorpio was at two. We'll do two minutes at the top of the minute. All right, let's do this. Scorpio, what is the romantic energy coming towards you for this coming weekend? Romance. Lavish the one you love with personal attention and affection. So this is everything that you dreamed about. This is you calling in your soulmate and your soulmate calling in you. This is also opposites attract because clearly this is the classic tale of sailor and mermaid. Um, this sense of not being able to explain somebody but not needing to because you feel them. This is being at one with your emotions, somebody who sets you right with your emotions. This is being able to spend actual time with this person. So either meeting them or for couples who are already in romantic relationships, um, having a sensational time this coming weekend um, with the person that you most love and that you most desire, being able to just do some one-on-one -on -one time, perhaps you're a mom and dad and you haven't been on a date for months, well, this coming weekend would be the perfect weekend. In fact, you should look to getting away with your love, either, um, yeah, next weekend, maybe even this weekend, um, uh, but this is definitely a time when love is in the air for you, uh, Scorpio. Love is in the air. Um, this is really exciting news for those of you who have not met your, your soulmate yet or your life partner. Um, because there is a sensational chance that you will. Um, at the very least, it's just in the ether for there to be a lot of um, romance. So romance is heightened feelings and heightened emotions, but not drama. It's not the same thing. It's something that you're comfortable with. It's something that makes you feel warm and amorous. And you'll be receiving it back. In other words, there will be reciprocity in your interests this coming weekend. And that, that's the same for couples and singles in that, you know, if you're married even for 50 years, your, your spouse will want to do things with you. They'll want to be with you. They'll want to spend time. There'll be extra touching, extra long eye contact. There will be an interest there will be a mutual interest and a, a warm and a um yeah a warm um loving energy about you this coming weekend that's beautiful energy look at the bigger picture so this is suggesting that this is going to be an exceptional love if you're not already in it it is coming for you look your arrow is flying right now, currently flying, but it's aimed very well and it's going to hit its mark. This is a very amorous moon. It's a full moon, um, <clears throat> full moon in Sagittarius, which means very look very closely and aim your target well 
and that you're in fact your target has been aimed very well and that you are follow the direction that it leads you you must 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 follow the direction that it leads you um i think that fate and destiny is going to be your guide and and what a wonderful energy that will be right i mean this is the sense of the arrow hitting the mark um love actually love actually love actually and what a that's a great movie too if you want to go see that that's <laughs> great movie um but yeah this is love actually this is actualized love this is real love this is love coming into being so you might get struck by cupid's arrow this weekend or this coming weekend um or you might just uh yeah your arrow might land in the right tush <laughs> Whoever you're aiming at, Scorpio, is going to be yours. And I think that it's going to be completely mutual. This is definitely an essence of true love and romance coming into you. Something that may have taken a while. Something that may have, um, the arrow may have been flying for quite some time, but now it's actually making its mark. It's actually, it's actually striking its target. And what a wonderful target you have been because this is somebody who is actually really, really good for you. I love this energy for you, Scorpio. This is, I think, what most of you have been waiting for. So enjoy this weekend. We're moving on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, the energy for you this weekend, ask for help. What do you really need? Be willing to accept support. There's an energy of here of the person that you're with is right for you. And the person that you're with has been very supportive. There's going to be this energy this weekend where the two of you will bond because you need to support each other. I don't know if I don't think it's financial. I think it's more emotional because this is under the water. So this has a lot to do with really listening and asking for somebody's advice and taking it. Being open and being receptive to what they have to say and being with a person that you can feel completely and totally emotionally vulnerable around. It's about a message of let yourself be vulnerable. Um, you're in a safe place. You're in a place or with a person that you can trust with those parts of you that um, you hide from the rest of the world. Um, now that's more talking to couples who are in long-term relationships, but this is definitely this coming weekend is you might need some help. You might need some assistance. Something emotional might be happening to either one of you that calls for the other to be very understanding and very open hearted. This could be you or this could be your partner. So, um, you're lucky. I think I'm feeling a really great vibe between those who are already in relationships that you are with somebody who does love you unconditionally and you can be open and vulnerable around. Um, yeah, this is this is just needing guidance and being able to ask for what you need and having a relationship where you can feel strong enough to ask for what you need. And that is a tremendous blessing. Um, as far as singles go, you might actually be asking for advice on um, what do you think about this person or asking somebody that you love or that you trust who's Whose, um, whose relationship to you, you wouldn't question. Whose love for you, you wouldn't question. So this could be a mother. This could be a father. This is the energy. Uh, or it could be a best friend or a brother. Whoever you are really close to that you can open up around. This is ask them for advice. Like ask them either for advice in terms of dating in general. Or ask them for advice in terms of what do you think of this person? Or what do you think of the person that I'm dating? Or what, what do you think is going on here? Ask somebody about the situation. Open up to them about it because you'll be getting some really wise advice in return. And, and honestly, it's advice that you need to hear right now. Um, and right, like I said, you wouldn't be going to just anybody to ask them about this. Most of the time, it's none of anybody's business. You know, you just do what you want to do. <clears throat> but this is a message that you will need some guidance this coming weekend for singles. You will need to ask somebody. Um, yeah, like I, like I said, it's really strong coming out. And before you leap into a relationship with a new person, you might want to ask the advice of somebody that you really trust. Because if you get in head over heels, you know you're not going to listen to any advice, right? So ask it before you get in head over heels. Like, what do you think about this person? This is also a statement of, 
you know, people in your life might just, even if you don't ask, they might tell you, you know, um, this is how you handle the situation or this is what I'm noticing. I just want you to be aware of it. So really look out for advice because this is something that you can trust and that is, is basically you're meant to hear. A personal itch issue reaches resolution. This is full moon in cancer. So this is a really emotional energy. And it could be kind of very vulnerable, like I said, very, very vulnerable. Um, and this is, once again, a personal issue reaches resolution. So this is between the two of you, if you are in a relationship together, once again, having some insecurities or being worried or being stressed out about a specific predicament in your life and opening up and sharing that with your significant other so that they don't feel isolated or that it doesn't cause a rift between the two of you. Um, this is definitely speaking to you having some struggle, going through some struggle this coming weekend and um, needing the support and needing and getting the support. That's also what I want you to realize is that you'll be getting the support as well. Now for you guys who are still single, in other words, this may not be the best weekend to jump into a relationship. This could be because something is bothering you and something is stressing you out. The person that you choose may not be the best selection for you. So be sure that you make you, you consult somebody whose opinion you trust, whose insights you're sure of before you jump in. This is definitely, you're going to want to have a wingman or woman with you to make sure that they are, you know, sort of blocking you from making any bad choices this weekend. All right, Sagittarius, I hear you. Um, here we go on to Capricorn. 1150 will do. Okay. Whew. I didn't write that down correctly. All right. Capricorn, you are limitless. You can do anything you choose. This is the energy of being solo. Um, this is an energy of being unique. This is also the energy of feeling like maybe you're the last one on earth and that you'll never meet anybody. And I can assure you that's not true because this card also goes in reverse, which means that who you are looking for is um, a special person. They're particularly special. This also speaks to having very, very high standards. Uh, standards so high, they're almost imaginative. They're almost like um, setting the bar so high, you may be painting the picture of a mythical creature instead of a real person. Um, so that is a little bit of a warning. But beyond that, I think most, for the most part, um, you don't, because I don't want you to lower your standards either but to check to see if your standards are in fact realistic standards, you know, or relative to who you are. Are you looking for somebody that's way, way, way like out of your league? I hate saying that too, because I do believe you guys deserve the best. Okay. Are, is the best determined by actual healthy qualities for you or are they based on fantastical qualities? It's a good question to ask yourself. Because uh, first, to in order to identify somebody as special, you have to realize who you are. You have to understand who you are. So this is basically this energy Capricorn of understanding oneself, understanding what makes you special, um, understanding everything that you have to give, understanding yourself realistically and having that ground. See, like there's this energy of a unicorn, you know, being mythical, you know, being somebody that doesn't, doesn't even really exist. That's a really interesting energy. Um, yeah, maybe that's why you're not seeing them. Maybe that's why you're not seeing the person or meeting them. Um, because of the fact that you have been looking for like fairy dust and, and shiny lights and, and that's not what it's about, is it? It's about having both feet on the ground. You really need somebody with both feet on the ground, not people who tell you fairy tales. You really, you really need that person who knows themselves as well. And so while we look for a unicorn, maybe it's best that we stop looking for unicorns and just start looking for people with a higher mindset. People... Mm. People, a person, 
Instead of looking for a unicorn, look for a person. Do you see? If you get close up to that, this is a real person inside. Um, that even this unicorn is actually a human being, somebody that's real, somebody that has um, their own mind and their own soul and their imperfections about them. And basically that's, I think what we're talking about this weekend is seeing, um, not disqualifying somebody for their imperfections, but ultimately seeing the beauty in their imperfections uh, and seeing that really the way that they treat you and how loyal they are to you is really what this grounding energy is. You see the grounding energy is attached. The two swans are actually grounded. Um, they're grounded into... Um, his hooves, his hooves are, are on solid ground. So, uh, yeah, it's it's like the way that they treat you is really what, what you should care about. Not sort of having all these qualifications about um, their criteria or, you know, how much money they make or how popular they are or how good they look. All of those things are superfluous. What's most important, and I think what you're being asked to get back to is that human inside. Is, is that person right for you? Forget about the qualifi external qualifications. Is the person inside right for you? Are, how do they treat you? Are they loyal? Are they steadfast? Do they put you first? Have they chosen you instead of you just, you choosing somebody that you admire? Have you chosen somebody who has chosen you back? That's a really interesting conundrum because I think especially for a sign like you that is very assertive and goes after what they want um, the delicacy of romance can sometimes get trampled because it's like it, you're just so used to going after you want what you want and achieving what you want you don't realize that within relationships you have to make sure first that what you want also wants you back so that's the first qualification is to not see what you want to see the fairy tale but to see the reality and gauge those qualities first and foremost on how you're being treated and, and what kind of attention that you're getting. That's something that you need to be aware of. Um, for those Capricorns who are, mm, those Capricorns who are in long-term relationships, really healthy relationships, I think you have found the one. I think you've found the special person that wants to go the long distance with you. And I think the reason why you have found your quote unquote unicorn is because you actually saw with the eyes of quality um, instead of fantasy. And you saw that you basically, they became this fantastical creature for you because of how they treated you and how they behaved and perhaps even how they treated others. Um, um, yeah, it's almost like you saw the real qualities it wasn't about are they rich do they have money you know have what, what have they achieved how much do they earn all of those things are superfluous and if you have a checklist filled with those you're not going to get the right person for you you're going to get a person that you're always striving for you're going to get a person who's a constant battle to achieve instead of actually being in a real companionship so this coming weekend is about maybe just maybe opening yourself up to different qualities in a person, those qualities in a person that are qualified by how they make you feel instead of um, those standards of, oh, but are they a gold standard? Do they have the right title? None of those things matters. You got to throw that away. That's all fantastical stuff, which you really need to look at is the person underneath. Mm, that is some serious energy. And it's just amazing how these cards always coincide with each other. Don't let pride get in your way. This is a warning of what, what are you, what, once again, it's like let go of pride, release pride. And once again, it's not about lowering your standards. It's about raising your standards because actually it's a very low set of standards, Capricorn, when you just qualify somebody based on their achievements. What about how they treat you? Do they have interest in you? This isn't, this isn't an accomplishment you're after. This is a romance. So this is something that, you know, is going to affect your heart space and your home space. It's not going to affect, um, it's not going to affect your business. It shouldn't, you know, you have that covered. What you need is a partner that'll take care of you at home. And I think in a way that has to do with really relinquishing your ego, uh, letting it go and setting those standards high in terms of how am I being treated? What kind of attention are they giving me? How much affection do they give to me? How special do they make me feel? 
Because if all of those things, if those boxes aren't checked, then you're not looking at the right person. Um, that's interesting energy that has come out for you, Capricorn. Aquarius, we're going to go to 2005. All right, Aquarius, love makes the difference. Uh, love helps heal past hurts and provides a sense of security and self-worth. You will find, I think, this coming weekend, your love taking off or finding a new direction in the way that you want your love to go. But this is definitely coming into contact with an energy that is supportive, that is the wind in your sails that helps to push you along. Um, an energy of, um, it's a gentle energy, um, but it's an intense energy. Uh, an energy of basically finding your direction. This could be you traveling. Uh, lots of times this is a card of traveling. So maybe you will meet somebody while you are traveling. Um, uh, and, and what's interesting about meeting somebody when they're traveling is that for some reason, the both of you were headed toward the same destination. So that's something that you should be aware of. Um, this could, you know, um, this person could kind of sneak up on you and surprise you. In other words, your attention and your focus was in a different direction. You could be, have been very focused on your career um, or, you know, or something else in, in, in whatever, in your personal life. And then all of a sudden this sort of love catches you and starts to take you into a different direction. And um, I think the, the uh, message here is to trust it. Um, there's this beautiful energy of just being supported. Um, music, music. Wow, this could also be sharing. You know, I just saw this. I just saw this because this is definitely not your birthday. But you see the candles on her head and the music. This is some sort of celebration that's happening. So you could be traveling this, this coming weekend to go to some sort of wedding or birthday or celebration and unexpectedly be finding somebody or meeting somebody there, which means that they already have a set of mutual friends as yours. This is also, um, um, yeah, the start, the start of a beautiful adventure. If you see, um, she starts out alone. She starts out basically because she's just listening to her own music. She's just trusting her own direction. Um, but in the future, in the sales, it's really pulling her toward this energy of being able to share herself with somebody. Um, this long-term uh, relationship or commitment. This energy of emotion, being able to actually carry her. So even though she starts off alone, she's going to end up with someone. That's really interesting. Lots of potential here. Bring love into the situation. And it's your, I can't, these cards are amazing. New moon in Aquarius. This is new moon, new potential. Um, a truth being revealed, something being revealed to you. There's a potential in for you to actually make a connection this coming weekend. And you can see it all has to do with the flow, the water, the truth, trusting the truth and letting yourself go along with it and letting it come to you instead of you just going to it. Because I honestly don't believe that you're going to start out looking for love this coming weekend. I think that you're going to start out. Yeah, you're not going to start out looking for love, but it's going to find you. This is a lovely energy. In other words, this is the start of something beautiful. What I love is bring love into the situation. So maybe it's you that realizes the potential um, in somebody that you meet. But it's almost like, yeah, it's like you showing up at the right place is what actually makes love arrive at the same time. More and more, I'm just feeling like you are actually going to meet this person it wasn't planned. This is not planned. This is spontaneous. Ooh. Let me see. I just feel you feeling something. This energy of like from across a crowded room. Maybe you're going back to a place to your home. Maybe you're traveling back home but getting closer to a home space where you're more open and receptive. So even though your focus was 
kind of solo in the beginning. It didn't end up that way. This is also speaking to if you are already coupled, uh, uh, an energy of talking to each other and communicating a long distance, I feel like you'll be communicating long distance, but that somehow you're going to be opening up to each other long distance as well. Um, they could be at a distance from you. There's something with distance here and traversing the distance, either through communications or through actual travel. This could be deciding to spontaneously get on a plane and go visit somebody because you just need to be around them. There's an energy of this emptiness being filled that, and that you're the one that does it. So maybe you're the one that makes the first move. Aquarius. Yeah. And, and, and it will be a good thing. Maybe, maybe you have to make a first move, but I don't see, I don't think it's a blatant first move. I think it's more subtle. I don't think it's a, Hey, will you go out with me? I think it's more um, a smile and an eye contact and then, you know, offering somebody a drink, you know, can I, can I get you something at the bar and sitting down and having a conversation with them. There is this energy of swapping philosophies, swapping beliefs, sharing truths between each other. It's an actual really um, intellectual energy of being attracted to somebody for their conversation. Oh, wow. Something is really going to sort of surprise you. Maybe you're going to get a conversation. This could also be the potential to actually receive a long distance call or, you know, a Skype chat from somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time. This is that kind of energy of, ooh, maybe just not even having thought about this person for a while, but all of a sudden they come back into the forefront of your mind and your life. Maybe out of the blue, you decide to call them or they decide to call you. But this would be an energy that you will know. You will know that if you get some sort of spontaneous drive to reach out to somebody, do it. Or if you get some unknown phone number or maybe not unknown <laughs> phone number, you don't want to pick up that stuff. But this energy of if you get this call, and maybe you don't pick it up because it's unknown. I don't know. But you hear the message and it's a familiar voice that you haven't talked to in a while. Call them right back. Or, you know, let that Skype chat that's popping up and interrupt your emails or interrupt whatever work you're working on. And answer them. Pick it up. In other words, make the connection in the opposite direction. Or bring the connection to that person. Oh, Wow. Excellent energy, Aquarius, especially for you, because it doesn't, it leaves you open and it doesn't back you into the wall. It says, how do you want to participate in this? Just be open. Um, and that somebody will be receptive and open to your energies as well. Ooh, that's some good stuff. Pisces. 2815, Pisces. The energy for Pisces for this coming weekend. Turn on your heart light. Reflect on a time when you experienced love. There's a quasi sense of healing here, Pisces, of being ready to heal, being ready to finally be loved. This is if you have been in a period of love hibernation, romance hibernation, it being safe or you feeling safe to turn your heart light back on. This is an energy of just coming out of a, a long situation that, that kind of made you wary. It kind of was very dramatic for you and your energy was drained and now it's like you're finally ready to get back out there again. So this would be your energy of getting back out there. If you are in a Pisces couple, this is the energy of opening up your heart to somebody and letting them know what you're really feeling instead of eating the feelings and pretending like nothing is going on, pretending like you don't feel hurt or disappointed, or even if it has nothing to do with them, just telling them about your day at work or why you've been so stressed is just turn on that heart space and open up your heart to um, the potential for somebody new or to the person that you're with because this is the week that you can feel, and I'm getting this in a lot of the Zodiac readings, vulnerable and safe around somebody. There's almost a protection in the air. This coming weekend 
where it will be uh, there will be a safe space for you to let yourself be vulnerable again but this is also speaking to healing um being finally ready because you haven't been ready for a while and like you just haven't been either haven't been interested in a while or having been really interested in somebody that you just had a bad breakup with and this is the energy of being able to be open and receptive to new possibilities again it could also be in certain situations calling you to open up your heart to somebody who is wants to talk to you or wants to make amends with you or if you're in a relationship that's a little bit rocky this is a call to be compassionate this weekend um, now you never have a problem with compassion but it's almost like saying this compassion isn't going to stab you in the it's like like you it's not going to be you stabbing yourself in the foot this time around that it's safe this is a safe space for you to be in oh, wow. blue moon energy and i love the blue moon for you because i always think of the color blue when i think of you and i and of course a moon sign this is definitely um this is definitely um something that's special that's happening so it almost felt like this is an energy of what felt like it would be impossible is going to actually happen so this is the time for you to turn on your heart light because you will be seen um the blue moon is a second full moon in a month so it's almost telling me that you may be getting a second chance this could be a second chance on a love in general or a second chance with somebody that meant something to you or that you meant a lot to there's a, a um or maybe just yeah like i said uh, a second chance on love this feeling like you like i said from the beginning like you had given up on love but now there's a light that's starting to glow deep down inside of you again and this is you being prepared for it um this is also having sort of double illumination when it comes to whatever is buried deep down inside of you that you didn't want to talk about this is the second round of illumination to illuminate whatever it was that was dark to bring it into the light and help you to heal yourself so that you can be ready to move on it's a tremendously beautiful energy it's a forgiving energy it's a compassionate energy and it's a healing energy this coming weekend but there also is that sense of believe in the impossible because it might just be happening uh, which is why you should prepare yourself to prepare like prepare yourself heal yourself this weekend so that you're prepared to be open next weekend because it there's a hidden blessing it that's what that's what i'm getting there's just a hidden blessing in next weekend for you something that you might not expect at all Ooh, drum roll please that's that's awesome um aries 3301 okay aries let's get into your reading slow down pause and allow things to unfold there's a feeling of you don't have to control everything you don't have to drive everything sometimes you need to hang back and let the other person take the lead that's more for people who are already in relationships there's also a sensation of maybe you're trying to push things too fast and drive things too hard and what you really and what's ironic is i think last week i got this card for you too so there's this uh, sensation of just enjoy each other you know do that netflix and chill again don't put yourself out into the open maybe you've been feeling a disconnect from your partner because the two of you have been distracted in other things you've been prioritizing <clears throat> excuse me you've been pri prioritizing things outside of the two of you and what you really need to do is just come back in and relax and focus on your relationship and the quietness of that relationship but also and I, I swear to god you got the same message last week so this is more of a netflix and chill and staying in and focusing on each other but it's also a, a, a message of take the pressure off like stop driving this so hard don't rush things you want to pull back from your expectate not from your partner but from your expectations on the relationship this week this coming weekend because it, it may exacerbate a situation that wasn't even that serious so just just hang back and almost let them take the lead and i think that's the brand new message coming out uh, this week is aries even though this is not like you 
give them a chance sometimes to lead you. See the dancing? Lead you. to let Trust that they can guide you through the maze. Trust that they can lead you in the dance, dance steps. Give over to this sense of, yes, you can trust them. This is the huge theme with all zodiac signs this coming weekend is this energy of let go. Let go of the need to have decided that you know what you want. Let go of the need to control. Let go of the need to make decisions. Let go of the past. That this is the this coming weekend is the weekend where you can actually be vulnerable. <clears throat> and for you, the message is, excuse me, um, for you, the message is let them lead. Like, like help to infuse their sense of self-worth by letting them make the decisions, like letting them make the choice and you open heartedly just lying and trusting because you can trust they've got this, they've got it covered this coming weekend. You have found somebody that you can put your trust in. So just let them lead. Um, for Aries singles, this is still the energy of, um, you know what? It's not necessarily stay in or stay by yourself, but it's don't push yourself too hard. It's like, no, you don't have to date any, everybody that you meet on a dating app. It, it, I know that you want to do the speed dating stuff, but don't do it. It's that this weekend, that's not the weekend for it. It's just going to be uh, something that frustrates you. Instead, just chill. In other words, do something that you love doing by yourself, doing with your friends, don't even think about the romance and that's where the romance will call into you. It's almost like this coming weekend, it wants to know that Aries, Aries needs to be on the receptive end to get any kind of potential. If you're driving hard, you're going to drive past it. So there's this energy of you could be really missing out if you're not the one that just allows yourself to be, this is difficult, not submissive, receptive. Like be that empty cup for somebody, to, not... Yes, I know. I always say fill your own cups, but no, be, be that empty cup for somebody to fill, make space to receive love this coming weekend instead. Cause if you chase it, if you pursue it, it's almost going to be like, like, you know, the, the running of the bulls type of thing. It's just going to be like, it's going to be a mess and you're going to run either run right by or run over what could be a very nice opportunity. Communication is key. New moon in Gemini. So listen, listen, what did I say? That's so interesting. Um, the receptive energy, and this is new moon. So this is new moon. This is the receptive energy. This is receptivity in terms of communication is what? Listen. It's telling you to listen. The reception end of communication is listening. So you might be getting communication from somebody. Pick up the phone. Talk to them. Or somebody may need to talk to you. Let them speak without judgment. Just open your ears to them. This may be the energy of you and your significant other. If you're in a relationship, sitting down and having him, the him or her, they are going to be coming to you to talk to you about something. It may not have anything to do with your relationship, but they're going to need you to be the one that just receives the messaging. This is not about obey. This is about listen. So listening we do not just to hear things or to collect facts, but to understand and empathize with somebody. So there is an energy of um, be open. Be open to somebody else approaching you. Be open to somebody else talking to you. Be open to um, somebody else taking the lead in general. That's an amazing clear message. There's also clear messages coming into you. Um, when communication is key and slow down, communication is going to be coming into you. Um, I don't know if it's about a past relationship or about, but I do think it has to do with romance. Maybe not necessarily about somebody, but by somebody. So it, I, I get the feeling that this energy is going to be them coming to talk to you, not people talking about them. But for some of you, you might get messages this week of, by the way, did you know about this? In other words, 
not messages that are people talking trash, but messages of people saying, you need to slow down. You're going too fast. There's maybe, and maybe they're going to offer you some sort of opinion or insights. I don't think you'll be open to opinions, but you would be open to insights. Be open to insights on your relationship. Be open to asking for advice, having communications with your spouse, or if you're single, especially, or in a new relationship, asking people what they think and really being receptive to the energy of their advice and their insights. Be open to other people's insights and intuitions on your relationship. It, it, somebody could be telling you, you need to slow down, you're moving too fast. And that would actually be good advice. Just an FYI. Okay, Aries. Um, let's go on to Gemini. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini energy. Okay, Gemini. I did have to get a throat lozenge because my throat is just horrible. So let's get into this. Love who you are. You are divine, delightful, and deserving of the wonderful things love has to offer. This is a really good week and coming up for Gemini singles. This is an energy of being admired and being seen and being recognized, being heralded, being hit on. You know, basically stealing the show and getting a lot of attention. This is a lot of people sort of blowing wind into your sail. Praising you. Yeah. But this is you really not caring. Like, not, not caring, but yeah, not caring. Because what you're doing is not really about them, is it? It's about you. So this is a weekend of self-love, of appreciation, of allowing people to admire you and definitely being given that admiration and just receiving it because you will be there. That's just, that's, it's so simple, but it's true. Hold on. Um, Yeah, man, if you look at this card, there's nothing but happiness. She's just all full steam ahead. So this could also be having a direction and finally getting a direction and knowing your direction in a relationship. Finally being liberated and free of, of any kind of worry or concern or heartache. This is about leaving the past behind. And letting it fuel you and your future. This is about not looking back. But it also could be about getting a new start. You know, starting fresh. Um, feeling like you finally understand something. Or that something that has been plaguing you or trapping you, tying you down. Is now finally the, the tether has been cut. I have to say though... This is a predominantly an energy of breaking up with somebody and moving on and really feeling good about it. And you're not even worried about being worried about not feeling guilty because the breakup was probably not as easy for them, but you just don't care. You are finally free. You felt tethered for so long. And maybe this isn't something that you've been talking about. Um... But there seems to be that you were in a situation that just didn't suit you. And you couldn't feel like yourself. And now this weekend, you're finally getting yourself back. There's, this had a lot to do with your um, last last reading, last um, um, Zodiac Week Ahead reading. Maybe I'll attach that above, uh, Gemini. But there just was this energy of finally... Being free, not only from the shackles of a committed relationship, but also from the shackles of feeling responsible for somebody else's emotions. Just not worrying anymore. This could also be like finally you won, people siding with you. You know, if you were doing like actually divorcing somebody, this is you finally being free of it, the divorce being finalized. Um, yeah, this is almost like feeling like you're winning and the prize is freedom. 100% this is the getting single card. But if you're already single, this is the energy that I talked about in the beginning of the reading, which is 
everybody admiring you and noticing you. And essentially, Gemini, they're going to be noticing you, not noticing them. Because you've got, like, you've got, you don't have a care in the world. You're where you want to be. You feel good about your situation. And you're not even thinking, screw them. You're just not even thinking of them. And boy, oh boy, that is making you a magnet for attention. People want your attention even more because you're not paying attention to them. There could be some of you intentionally not paying attention to people, like intentionally putting on a an air of aloofness in order to get somebody's attention. That could also be this energy too of you actually having a specific person whose attention that you specifically want and you know that the most tempting thing for them is to lure them in by um, being aloof or playing coy. And, and that's the energy that's, it's going to work because you've got their attention like crazy this weekend. What do you need to release? That's interesting. What did I just talk about? Waning moon. This is an energy of wanting freedom of wanting to let go and look how beautiful that card is. It's just got such hope and potential for the future by just letting it see how it's almost like letting it go. It's almost like floating away into the snow itself. This is about you relinquishing your past. You relinquishing your ties to the past. You getting out of the situation. You firming up and officializing a breakup. And this is about the energy of you becoming single. Or you just being free of worry and concern for other people's opinions. And sort of free to do what you want and say what you want. You will be act absolutely stunningly beautiful. It's almost like you're going to be like the impossible person this week, the, the impossible person to reach. Like I could never reach them. You're like fairy dust in the sky this coming weekend and let it be, let it be. I think there's such a wonderful essence and quality about you that you could just assume that role so perfectly. Let you be, let allow yourself to be the fantasy for other people. You almost like being put in that position. And this is definitely the position you're going to be assuming <laughs> this weekend is just superstar too far ahead of everybody this is the you know this is me you're thinking of your direction and happiness and they're just admiring you damn click click that's you you just all kinds of on it cancerian your energy like attracts like if you long for more love be more loving this is the calling in your soulmate card. This is the calling in your divine counter, uh, your divine counterpart card. But this is also a, a remembering what it, what an exceptional and this is such a Cancerian card because of the child and the innocence and the open heartedness, but also the manifestation and the psychic connection. And that's you. This is psychic energy around around you. This is the cardinal energy of the psychic energy. You are the most, I would, well, yeah, one of the most psychic signs in the Zodiac. And this is a reminder. And I've been saying this to you for a couple of weeks now. I think it was just a part of a predominant part of your, um, your weekly horse, your, um, your, I'm sorry, the uh, week ahead. So I'll attach that up here. I'll attach it up here. Um, yeah. this is the energy of you are so powerful as a manifester. You have to be aware of it. You have to be aware of it so that you can take charge of it because you are manifesting things even in your sleep, Cancerians. And this is the energy of manifestation. So for those Cancerians out there that have been manifesting day in and day out for this love and for this romance, your counterpart is literally coming into your life. It's, they are, first of all, they're being built. So in other words, in order to be with the person that you want to be, you have to be the person who you want to, would want to be with. So are you everything? And 
for those places that are you're lacking what can you do to fill up those holes because your person is literally being formed as we speak they're being readied for you they're being prepared for you and it could very well be for those of the cancers those cancers out there cancerians out there who have done the work this is the weekend that you actually bam get plopped right in front of them but the, the point is that there has to have been manifestation work done. And for those of you who have not finished it yet, that's okay. This weekend will be, there'll be a strong clarity on what it is you need to work on in order to fill those gaps so that you can be that person that you would want to be with. And once you really can look in the mirror and be very exceptionally happy with yourself and proud of yourself every single day, if that is where you are and you've been noticing that about yourself over the past year even, um, there's essentially the message that, well, that, that it's a sign that, you're, that your person is coming to you because you're the person that you want to be. You're the person that you want to see in the mirror. You're not disappointed. You're proud of yourself. You're happy with yourself. There's a contentment and a fullness when you think of yourself. This is just the energy of, 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 of a, pa a partner, a counterpart coming into you, receiving them, but also, and this is what I want you to understand, having had a hand in creating them, literally creating them, because as you're creating yourself, you're creating them. And if you're still finding yourself in a situation where you have, there's a lot of codependency or a lot of passive aggression or help holding on to past situations, well, then I can guarantee you that your divine counterpart is doing the same thing. In other words, they are where you are this week and they are your reflection of yourself. So if you, if you really want to raise that vibration to actually be able to meet them, you have the power to do so this coming weekend, but you have got to be able to be happy with you and like where you are. Does it have to be perfect? No, because nobody's perfect. But there's a sense of wholeness and completeness about the self that welcomes in somebody who's whole and complete. Now, why am I saying this to you long-winded? Because you're calling in your divine counterpart. And I've been getting this for you for quite some time. You are calling in your divine counterpart. They are on their way to you. You are being built for them and they are being built for you and you are calling them into each other and this is what I need you to hear if you have been single for a long time it is because they have been preparing for you and you have been preparing for them it has got nothing to do with you being meant to be single for your entire life it has to do with you having reached a point in your life something had happened something usually happens to us to really kick our emotional butts and push us into using our mind over matter and making a decision. And I think that for those of you who have been lonely for not lonely, a, a single for a long time, it is because at least subconsciously, but I think more consciously, you made the decision. I'm not making the same mistake again. And in making that decision, you started to clean up your own act. And as soon as you did, it was like, boom, groundbreaking everything shook it was that was the universal shift into this person started preparing the same time and so look in the mirror if you want to gauge when's my soulmate coming in you look in that mirror and you gauge how happy am i with that person right there how much do i love him or her how much am i proud of myself and am i where i want to be in life and when you can answer that question cancerian Literally, you're, I'm about 80% there, or I'm nowhere near it, but then your soulmate is nowhere near you. If you're 80% there, you can be like, you know, I really feel like I'm almost there. These are the things that I need to work, down, work on. Write them down. Because those are the things that are going to ex, um, expedite your soulmate coming to you quicker. What I'm saying is they already exist. And they're being built as you're building yourself. So how soon they come to you is just a determination of how soon you'll be ready to receive them. No, your life doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to be 
in a perfect place in life. You know, it's like, you know, you don't have to be a millionaire. You don't have to live in your dream home. You don't have to have your dream job, but you do have to really be willing and open to share all that, like not be ashamed of who you are, be strong in who you are, not be so desperate to be loved that you're willing, you'd be willing to automatically give yourself away and just become whatever they want. No, this is about knowing yourself so that you can contribute and be a healthy, sort of a healthy partner in the relationship. Um, this is also speaking to Cancerians who are in long-term relationships. You and your partner are reflections of each other. There's so if you're if you're having a hard time understanding them, what would you want in that situation? This is it. This is asking yourself, how do I want to be treated? How do I really and what do I really need in this situation? And remember to treat your counterpart that way because that's what's going to make for a healthier bond, a happier bond. And whoever you are with right now, you manifested them into your life. You called them in. So please understand that even though this is a gentleness and this is a, almost a receptive energy, there's also, I want to remind you of your power, Cancerians. I want to remind you that if you called them in at any time, you can kick them out. You do not have to hold on for no, what is no longer serving you. So if you want to manifest it, and then I think this is what it is. It's almost like I'm, I'm hearing if you're in an unhappy relationship, now you'll start doing things to make the other person unhappy so that they end up, so the gap ends up being like distant, distant, distant to the point where you don't have to officially break up with somebody, but instead you can just say we grew apart. But the truth is, Cancerian, you're the one driving that energy. You're the one. Because there is something there that you want distance from now. And I think that this is the, a week to call and recognize your own power, especially when it comes to relationships. And see and take responsibility for what's happening around you and what you're feeling. Because that's going to lead you either farther from what you want. In other words, it's, it's, it's direct proportion. Um, if your focus and energy is on what you don't want then you're going to stay with what makes you unhappy. And if your focus and energy is in what you do want, then you will drive away those things that are not right for you and you will call in those things that are right for you. You, there is a group of Cancerians out there. I have no doubt your soulmate is around the corner because you have been working on yourself and you have been turning on your heart light and you have been manifesting like a mm -mm -mm -mm. You have been manifesting like crazy. And this for you guys, for that particular group of Cancerians, oh, your love is going to come in. And they're, they're, they are literally around the corner. You could probably hold your breath. Don't really do that. But you could probably hold your breath and bring them to you. You are good enough. Wow. And this is the healing energy of Virgo. You could be caught. Your, your um, counterpart. I don't want to give away signs, actually, though, because that's more for who's coming towards you. And right now, this is just a general energy of love of what did I say? And these cards have been so in sync with each other. The whole reading, love yourself first, let go of all of those things that do not serve you, especially the concept that you have to please everybody to be loved that empties you. And then what do you have? You have somebody that needs to be healed and you're either far, you're even farther away from love than you started. So this is about what did I say, look in the mirror, look at that person. Do you see who you want to see? And if you can't answer yes, then what, what do you have to work on to be able to answer? Yes. This is about accepting your self worth because when you accept your self worth, you call in a person of worth. This is a reminder to you. Cancerians understand, wake up. This is a heavy, hardcore manifestation period for you guys. The universe is listening. So if you want to call in a soulmate and divine counterpart, love you first. Know your own worth. Focus on where you want to be. This is about rediscovering what it is that really makes you feel whole. Because you want a whole person to come to you, right? You don't want any half messes anymore. You don't want that kind of responsibility. You don't want to be drained. You want 
a whole person, a full person like this full moon, a healed person, a healthy person. So that's what you have to work on. That's what you have to be. Mm, that's powerful energy. And I, I know that we're getting this message because our counterparts are like literally right around the corner. And this is for some of you, like I said, Cancerians, this is the energy of they're around the corner. It's going to happen. It could happen to some of you next weekend, next weekend or the next couple of weekends or before the end of the year, like Merry Christmas to you type of thing. Wow. That was a lot. So Cancer Leo, and we were at one point. Okay, hold on. Okay, Leo, this energy is coming out for you. Relationship patterns. It takes strength to recognize the need for change. There are some deep conversations that you need to have with your significant other. There's some realizations that you need to understand inside yourself. There's something that could be coming up this, this coming weekend with your significant other where you realize that, that maybe just maybe they aren't as different as you thought they were from those people in your past that didn't work out. And that the truth of the matter is looking at you and looking to see how you contribute to those circumstances that you find yourself in. Um, not in an accusatory way or a judgmental way, but in an open-hearted understanding way of Wow, this is what I'm going through. This could even be getting some sort of higher insight and listening to get, getting some advice and trying to understand counseling why why you keep making these same decisions. This is also somebody, maybe somebody you're in the relationship, your significant other, coming to you and pointing something out to you. Once again, I don't feel this is in a judgmental way. In fact, it could very well be leading to an extremely healthy conversation between the two of you. Something that maybe you've never had before. You've never had such an open, honest relationship or an open, honest conversation with somebody. Um, but you've definitely always fallen for people who have adored you and worshipped you. And that could be a problem because what you really need is somebody who will hold you accountable uh, for who you are and to remind you to constantly be the best of yourself. So Leo is the person that you're with or interested in. Are they a person who makes you the best of yourself? Are they the person who um, challenges you? I'm not saying argue argues with you or accuses you or anything like that. I'm saying the person who challenges you to be the best of yourself instead of the worst of yourself. Now, for those Leos out there that are just like looking to get into relationships, this is uh, know that quality in somebody. Know that quality in somebody and sort of look at the people, um, you know, take take people more seriously who are who are honest with you. Yeah, who who hold you accountable for who you are. And in doing so, show that they actually believe in the best of you. I think sometimes maybe just maybe, especially being Leo, there's a sense I have my Venus is in Leo and there's a sense of confusing people worshiping you and adoring you for people actually loving you because it's two totally different things. And yeah, it's like, are you attracting people who are attracted to you? Are you attracting people who find you attractive? Sure, of course you love that kind of attention, but that's not the same as love. Right. And to be able to decipher between the two, to be able to get yourself into a healthier situation instead of the same situation over and over and over again. So many times we perceive the wrong things. We can we convolute what love is. Now, love is connection, but connection is based on honesty. You have to be truthful about who you really are. It's not just about the makeup in mirrors. Right. It's not about the image or the way things appear. This is a maybe you're suspicious of or suspecting that you have gotten yourself into the same kind of relationship you were in before that didn't work out for you. And honestly, the only way to understand and know if that's the truth is be a, being able to openly communicate about it. There is such a trend this whole entire this whole entire timeline for all the zodiac signs Leo for for us to really look at ourselves open ourselves like this is this is the weekend where we tell ourselves the truth 
we admit it to ourselves. And in doing that, prepare ourselves for something so much better than we've had before. So Leo, watch out. If you're a Leo single, watch out for those people who are just over adoring you and worshiping you. And just because honestly, yes, you want to be that beautiful thing, that beautiful, not thing, person that stuns people when you walk in the crowd. And you want the person who you walk in with to be proud that you're that stunning. But you don't want that to be all you are to them. You want to be more. Why? Because under everything else, the utmost, the thing that is of utmost importance to Leo, loyalty. It's not showmanship. It's not stardom. It's not being in the spotlight and it's not attention. It's loyalty. Loyalty when it comes to, when it comes to who you are emotionally, loyalty, 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 loyalty. Do not confuse attention and compliments as somebody being loyal to you. And I think in the past you have, and that's why this energy is coming up again, because you're, you're meant to make better choices. You're meant to have that truth in your life, but so don't get disguised. And this could be you literally next weekend saying, you know, like this could be the turnaround weekend for you. This is that energy of I would have really fallen, like being sitting across from somebody listening to how they're flirting with you and how they're complimenting you and finally realizing, oh my God, I would have really fallen for this person a year ago, wouldn't I? Yeah, it's not working for me. This is you being able to take a compliment and then take an exit instead of take a compliment as a sign of love. And I think you've learned this. And this is excellent because what this does is it sort of cleanses out this space in your life, sort of scrubs it clean. It's all shiny new. If there was rot in the tile, you scooped it out and you fixed it. Like this is literally all new stuff, but not just paint on a wall. This was the walls being stripped, gutted, the mold being removed. And now you're replacing it with something brand new, which is healthy, healthy. And it's beautiful too. It's even more beautiful because the beauty lives within the walls as well. And you want people to see that about you too. And you want to choose your romantic partner based on the fact that they, they got x-ray vision. They know how good you look on the outside, but they're more impressed and in love with you because they know that from soup to nuts, you're a beautiful human being. That's what you want. And that's the energy of what you're going to be insisting on this coming weekend. The answers you need are coming. So in other words, this is Gemini energy. You could be welcoming in Gemini. You could be have learned all of this from your experience with somebody that is Gemini. I know Gemini was playing a prominent role in your life during the summertime. But right here, right now, what this is telling me is your person is coming. They're not coming this coming weekend. They're on their way. And the realization you make this weekend is going to make sure they're your real person instead of just another karmic mistake. Now, if this is in your relationship, you, you're in a relationship that you're in love, right? This is the feeling of clarity coming in this coming weekend or the next couple of weekends about a circumstance that you weren't sure of that made you feel worried or concerned. You know, this, this is something that may have been getting in the way of your relationship actually clearing up because you talked about it or because you heard something or learned something or found something out. This is the energy of clarification finally coming through, finally happening. Um, they're, they're on their way. So they're on their way now. They could be arriving next week or the week after. This is an energy of what has been worrying you or concerning you will be clarified by then. Or your clarity in general. Uh, in other words, this realization in you is coming. It's coming next weekend or the weekend after. It's coming. You're going to finally realize it. And in realizing it, gain a lot more, be able, basically start making much better decisions. All right. We're going to move back to Taurus. Let's do Taurus right now because I had skipped over Taurus and I was like, okay, we'll just do Taurus at the end then. And I was like, no, you need to do them right after Leo. 
Okay, let's do it. Back to what you love. Reevaluate your desires. Have you gotten away from what it is you really love? This could be the energy of spending literal physical distance away from your family, away from your loved ones, away from your husband and your wife, away from or having to be at a distance from somebody that you just met that you're finding yourself crazy for or longing for. Maybe meeting somebody who's at a distance from you, a long distance relationship. But this is being able to finally look forward to, oh, maybe you're coming home and the person that you're in love with is at home or they live closer to your home um, and they don't live near where you are. Maybe you're away on a business trip or you've been relocated for work or you're at school for some reason or you just had moved away from the home area. But Thanksgiving, there was an energy of something popping off for you guys. So maybe just maybe you're going to get to see that boo that you started a cornucopia of love with this coming weekend. You're actually going to be able to return to that heart space, that place that you feel comfortable, that you feel loved, that person. Look at that. You've been dreaming about this person. And I really do feel like you are at a distance from this person. Maybe it could also be an emotional distance, right? You could have felt just emotionally removed from somebody. Maybe you had a fight, a disagreement. You had been feeling disconnected from somebody that you really care about. This is you too being able to reconnect and find that connection and find them again. Oh, I love that. Also, there's an energy of somebody from your past might be coming back or you might be getting a second chance with somebody that you haven't seen in quite some time. I don't know if it's particularly an ex, because you know how I feel about exes and going back to exes. It's just too easy and it's 99% of the time a bad decision. Um, so it, maybe it's not that. It's just being able to finally see see somebody that you care about. They're, they are currently at a distance from you. That's what I feel. And like I said, it could be emotional distance. But this is that filling that gap. Remember how I was, I don't know if you watched the Cancerian, but it's like filling in the gaps. You're filling in the gaps of what kept the two of you apart. You're working out and understanding what it is that was lacking or what it is that was causing the separation. And you're being able to fill them in and, and go to them. Actually be near them. Be in their presence. This could be you talking to them through a video screen because they are at long distance, but you feeling connected to them. You getting that one-on-one -on -one time with your person. This could also be if you're single, being able to actually, when you return home or when you travel back to where you came from, you actually ending up meeting the person of your dreams. You know, you may not, probably had not even been thinking of, of it. You were probably thinking of something else. And so meeting in that scenario, this meeting this person or finding this person would actually quite surprise you. Um, but yeah, there's a sense of traveling back to somebody, returning back to who you love, returning back to your heart space, finding yourself and then finding your person because you found that heart space, like returning to that person that is the right person for you. You've missed this person. I think most for many of you, you have missed this person a great deal and you'll be able to see them again. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, that's so awesome. Don't let your past hold you back. South node. Ooh, this just give me chills. This just gave me chills. This is like, don't let your past hold you back. So in other words, there is some forgiveness here. There's a sense of um, maybe even reconciliation. So it could very well be forgiving somebody that you used to date. But I feel like there would be have been a long time ago. Or this could just be the energy of, you know, being more conservative and not wanting to take a leap and not being ready and, and that have held you back before. Whatever lesson you learned in the past or whatever way, and I know you can feel it in your heart, if you felt like you really made a big mistake, a big mistake, this is this is that understanding, that, re, that memory coming back into the forefront of your mind saying, don't make the same mistake again, and you're not making the same mistake again. you making, because, so if you had recently gotten your heart broken, um, um, or if you had gotten your heart broken big time in the past, you learned the lesson so that you do not make that same mistake again. That's a wonderful energy of being able to sort of transcend where you came from so that you can get to where you're going. 
This is, look at movement toward the future. So even if this is somebody coming back from the past, it's because they did the work on themselves or you did the work on yourselves to meet each other in the future. There is still progress here. You are moving away from what you had been and onto what you fully truly are. Um, don't let your past hold you back and then back to what you love. Oh, I just feel like right now, forgive yourself. That's a huge message, forgive yourself. Because whatever mistakes you've made in the past, or forgive them, whatever mistakes they've made in the past do not define everything that they are. So this is a sense of forgiving the past and so that you can go back to what you love. Not letting that past make you feel like you have to stay stuck in a situation that's making you miserable because you don't. You don't. Or not letting your past or somebody else's past be everything that defines them because it isn't. Forgiving the past and letting it go and only seeing what's in front of you because that's really the only direction any of us should be moving. Ooh, ooh, strong energies there. Now I know why it was for you. Okay, so now we're going on to Virgo. Okay, Virgo. Demonstrate love. Find out what is important to those you love and act on it. You know, I think if you're in a romantic relationship, um, or even if you're not, I think so whoever's watching you or interested in you, they're going to be very impressed by how you behave with your family, by how you take care of the people around you. I think this is one of the things that made you stand out to them, is how much you care about people around you. Go of you being recognized for how caring you are and how nurturing you are. And that trait about you being what stands out about you the most, really impressing somebody, but also them swarming you with love, like honestly feeling like you've just been washed away with love, like swimming in the love, swimming in the romance this coming weekend, like you are literally dived in. You have taken the full on plunge into whoever you're with or immersing yourself into, um, into your relationship this coming weekend if it's a long-term relationship you are going to like there's a lot of abundance swimming around you this coming this coming weekend yeah infinite possibilities you know being able to focus on those things that you're excited about maybe those things that you have been putting away or trying to put in the back of your mind because you didn't want to get too excited about them this coming weekend you're going to be able to get excited yeah, you're going to be able to get excited out aloud. There has been this energy that you are finally able to finally come into. This is your past reading. I'll attach that above too. Um, this is your, uh, like, a hold on. I just wanted to make a note to myself so I don't forget it because I will forget it if I don't make the note. Um, this is the energy of, yes, you absolutely being able to let out what you feel and not have to feel like you have to be cautious about it because you're actually surrounded by so much support and so much caring. This is actually just being loved like crazy by somebody. Um, clearly it could be a long-term relationship or a new relationship. Um, but then definitely bathing you in affection and attention this coming weekend. I kind of like that for you, right? Or And vice versa. So this would be full reciprocity, Virgo. This wouldn't just be you smothering somebody with affection and attention. I don't know. You know, the moon card could change everything. We're going to see what it says. But there's an energy of reciprocity. Uh, in other words, you are part of the love. You're part of the connection. Um, that loving part of you is part of what's making this work out so well. It's not just about, it's not just about you giving everything. No, 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 no. It's about you actually being more on the receiving end. What did I say? All of the signs were on the more of the receptive end. A fiery climax approaches. Virgo, I'm just going to say this right now. This is some hot sex energy. This is it. This could be the first time the two of you 
This is the first, this, this could be the first time the two of you do it. This could be the first time you've done it in a long time. This could be a sensation of something that you have been waiting for for a long time finally popping off and coming to you or coming in you. Um, but this is definitely Mars energy. Mars energy is aggression, absolute certainty, determination, like right there going after what it wants and getting what it wants. It's the energy of war. This is aggressive energy. Somebody is just all over you this weekend. If you're single, a single Virgo, you're going to be like swimming in possibilities and potentials. Somebody, or, or you're going to meet a person who just absolutely adores you. There's going to be a lot of sexual chemistry. And what people don't know about you is that you are a sexual freak. You have got that freak hidden and on lockdown, but oh, it is there. And secretly, we all know it too. So the truth is, you're going to pop off with your fire energy. You're going to pop off with your sexual energy because this is masculine sexuality at its purest form. This is being virile and, 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 um, horny. This is about, oh, this is about a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of going on. So you're going to be swimming in it. So this could be you and your boo need to lock yourself away in your room or your house or a hotel room. You need to lock the two of you away because wherever you end up being, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be banging in the bathroom of the restaurant that you eat at. You're going to be playing with each other under the table. This is the energy of sex swimming all around you, but it is necessary. Also Virgo, it is connected to love. It's, it's not absent of love. It's not just sexual chemistry. It is sexual chemistry because now you feel comfortable enough around somebody to let them in, really let them in. Like that's what this is and let them keep coming in and in and in and deeper and deep. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to keep, I'm, I, there's nothing else to say. Virgo, this is hot, hot, hot and it's going to be all weekend long. If this car's a rocking, don't come a knocking. That is what this energy is. Do not disturb. Hang out the sign on your door because it is a do not disturb kind of weekend. At the very least, something is coming in that you have been waiting for for a very long time. That, that you have been waiting in for a very long time. You've known it's coming and now it's finally arrived. You've ex been expecting it and now it's finally arrived. That's the more toned down interpretation of your reading. I don't think that's the primary one, but I, I'm just going to let you have that just in case that's where you're working. Yeah, I love these readings. I love these readings. Some of them fly by. But remember, and this, uh, remember, it's not about how long or short the reading is. It's about does the energy come out? Does the message come out? That's what's important. So I just wanted to say that before I move on to Libra. All right, Libra, let's check out your energy. Have patience. Love is patient and kind always. This is Aquarius energy. This is your dreams coming true. This is also, yes, your person is on their way. You, you, you've manifested them. Your dreams and wishes have been heard. And so they're being sent to you. If you're frustrated or if you're frustrated at your loved one, this is have patience with them. Show affection and show kindness. Open up your heart and open up to their perspective. And, you know, you know um, um, maybe it's you just need to have patience with them not being ready yet, but they're going to get there. This is maybe you deciding to be patient with yourself and be loving and caring with yourself. So that you're open to what's really good for you instead of what you're willing to settle for. Generally speaking, though, this is your wish coming true. Have you been wishing on a star, Libra? Have you been manifesting? Have you been lighting candles? Have you been focusing? Have you been casting spells? Because it's coming in. This is that sense of something beautiful is about to happen. Oh, oh I love you. Hold on. I'm sorry. I know that my dog needs to be taken out. And she's like, you need to pay attention to me now. So 
Plain and simple, this is the energy of your wishes coming true, and it could be coming through, coming true with an Aquarius. Um, the, like the the link below, of course, is the who's coming towards you, but this is strong Aquarius energy. This is truth. This is being honest about what you want in life and what is important to you. And this is because you're honest with yourself, you're now finding the right person coming towards you. But this is definitely wishes coming true. I want to get right to this moon card, prosperity. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'll talk and talk and talk for an hour for each of you if I need to get to the heart of a, of a, of a reading. And it's funny how I almost predicted this. Libra, there doesn't need to be anything said. There's new love coming in. This is a wish come true. This is a person that you have wished for and hoped for. This is your, your person that's coming to you. You're going to get your person. You've manifested them. You, you, you asked for them. You wish, this is like wishing on a star. You have had patience, right? Maybe somebody who you have wanted from the time you were young, somebody that you've admired and look up, looked up to. Maybe somebody who is sort of a celebrity. So, so they're in the public eye. They're a star or maybe you're a star. Either way, Libra, this is the energy of really like a, like dreams coming true wishes coming true wishes granted and truth being revealed and this is the north star you being led to who you're supposed to be with prosperity lies ahead or this could be you're being led to the person that you've wanted to be with because you've made your dreams come true it's like the the a whole other your your profession opens up and that's what leads you to your boo this is it. This is your divine counterpart. And if you are already with your star, your dream come true, this means you had another 20 years of prosperity and abundance ahead of you. This is the person that you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life. That's what this is. Being able to actually be in the presence and, 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 and have that crazy wish that you thought would never come true, have it come true person that you dreamed of is actually yours. This is it, Libra, this is it. This is it. How much else, how many other ways do you want me to say it? Wish granted. I think that's the best way to put it. Okay, Libra, now for all of you guys, if you wanna know who is coming towards you, I'm gonna be pulling that full spread, that extended link is below. Thank you for hanging with me once again for Romantic Tarot. I'll see you next week.